If someone were to ask me to describe MDDS in one quick sentence, I would probably say, I feel like I'm always riding a boat. And some people might think, hey, that doesn't sound so bad. I went on a cruise once and had the time of my life. But this is definitely no pleasure cruise. And living with MDDS is so much more than just feeling like I'm riding on a boat. So in this video, I'm going to do a deep dive into what it means to live with MDDS. Living with MDDS has caused me to go from being the type of person that never took any medication for anything. Um, even if I had a headache, I wasn't going to take something for it. If I had a cold, I wasn't going to take anything besides vitamins and eat some chicken noodle soup. To suddenly being a person that needed to take so much medication, I couldn't keep track of it. So it is just after nine o'clock in the morning and I haven't taken my medication yet. I have stopped to try to take it twice and then gotten distracted by these cats <laughs> and by the fact that my symptoms are so high it kind of affects my train of thought and my memory process. So I just wanted to stop and take this clip of how bad I actually wobble when I don't <laughs> take my medicine. Um, I'm actually holding my camera in this clip and I don't, don't normally do that in my videos because I have a hard time holding the camera steady. Um, I'm holding onto a table right now to hold myself steady. If I let go, I have a really hard time um, standing up. Now brain fog definitely plays a role in that so if you haven't already seen my video where I discuss and demonstrate brain fog I'm gonna put a link to that down below in the description so be sure to check that out if you haven't seen it already but I'm gonna post a little clip up here of me organizing my pills which is what I have to do so that I make sure that I don't miss any doses and or I don't take extra doses since I have a hard time keeping track of it all. Um, it physically makes me sick to my stomach to see this many pills every day because I was not the kind of person who ever took pills or medicine for anything. This specific cocktail mix was created after trying an assortment of other medications some prescriptions and some supplements um, that didn't work so well. Some of them actually caused additional side effects. And when I complained of those additional side effects, it was suggested that I take additional over-the-counter medications, which had nothing to do with my original problem, which was the sensation of the rocking, bobbing, and swaying. So all those medications that you just saw were all a waste, none of them worked. Um, living with MDDS for many of us means trial and error with many, many different medications. And most of us don't find anything that really quite works the way we want it to work. Since there's no cure or effective treatment, it means that I still struggle with symptoms and the sensation of rocking, swaying, and bobbing every minute of every day. In my effort to take the least medication possible, it means beginning and ending every day with medicated pain balm because living with MDDS is so much more than feeling like you're on a boat. It's physically reacting to everything that I feel. It's fighting a constant battle for my balance every minute of every day. It puts a lot of strain on all of my muscles and my joints so I have constant knee pain, hip pain, and back pain. It's suffering fatigue and physical exhaustion because you're fighting an invisible battle to stand in the waves every minute of every day. Therefore, living with MDDS means counting my spoons because MDDS is a chronic illness that causes fatigue. If you're not familiar with the spoon theory or the term spoonie, I've added a link to a video down below in the description called the Spoon Theory Short Version with Visuals. 
It's by another YouTube creator and fellow Spoonie, so be sure to check out her channel, Maribel King's Official, and be sure to watch her video to get a better grasp of what I'm talking about when I speak about counting my spoons and being a Spoonie. Sometimes being a Spoonie and living with this can make it hard to do simple things like take a shower or get dressed. They call this an invisible illness, but when I've used up all my spoons and have no more energy to fight the feelings that I'm feeling inside, this is the not so invisible thing that happens to me. If I were to tell somebody in this moment that I felt awful and needed to lay down right away, they might think, nah, you look fine to me. And I did in fact look fine. So I decided to keep on going. Uh oh, suddenly things don't look so good and I'm struggling to hold my body still. I grab the door handle for stability as I wait for it to pass, but my body is exhausted and I'm disoriented. So instead of passing, it gets more intense. And then I struggle to stay standing on my own two feet. Suddenly I remember one of my coping mechanisms and I focus intensely on a still object while I tighten all my core muscles to regain my stability. Symptoms similar to this can also be brought on by storms or other things that we call triggers. It's difficult to capture these instances of non-invisible symptoms, but a fellow MDDS warrior and YouTube creator was able to capture a very severe reaction to a storm and some changes in barometric pressure. Um, her channel name is Beautifully Broken, that's the banner for her channel right up there. And I'm adding a link in the description down below of the video that she just put out. Um, so definitely give that a watch. These instances are important for us to capture and share in order to raise awareness of the severity of symptoms with this illness. So our surroundings such as lighting or sound or kind of just how busy the surroundings are or whether it's an enclosed space can have a big effect on our symptoms as well. Um, so this can cause similar reactions to what you saw in that clip that I just showed and also in the video clip that I linked from the channel of Beautifully Broken. Since these symptoms can kind of spring up out of nowhere, um, in the early stages of this illness, I definitely started developing some agoraphobic kinds of behaviors because I was scared to go in public. I was scared that that would happen to me while I was in public. I didn't want to go into public places alone. Um, just the thought of it would kind of make me a little bit panicky and there were even a few situations where I was trying to go out and do something by myself like trying to go to the grocery store and then just the anxiety of what's going to happen when I'm there all alone and suddenly I can't walk at all and can't get myself to a safe place um, and when that happens to me I also kind of lose the ability to communicate effectively so I wouldn't even be able to explain to somebody else what was going on and just the thought of knowing that that was a potential risk I was taking going into a public place alone and there were times that I even had to stop on the side of the road and calm myself down because I had gotten so freaked out and worked up about it that I was starting to black out and I was afraid I was going to wreck my car. Um, and then after calming myself down, I realized I wasn't going to make it the rest of the trip and I wasn't going to be able to handle going in there by myself, so I had to turn around and go back home. Um, I think some of this is all a real issue for many people who suffer from MDDS. Uh, that's why we can sometimes feel a sense of isolation and it's almost because our symptoms can force us to isolate ourselves in some ways. Even if I'm out with somebody, I'm still nervous about my surroundings. Like if I go to a fast food restaurant and I wanna get up and refill my drink, I kind of have a little bit of anxiety about getting up and maneuvering my way through the tables because 
I don't trust my own stability. I think that I'm gonna bump into somebody's chair or fall over on somebody's table while I'm trying to navigate my way through the restaurant. So in this next clip that I'm gonna show you guys, I'm explaining a little bit about some of the struggles that I have with being out in a public place, like a busy, noisy restaurant, and some of the struggles that I have just eating while I'm in an environment like that. So this is just another look at the reality of what it's like to live with MDDS. I'm trying to eat my lunch and I'm incredibly nauseous. I probably have about four minutes left in my lunch break and I haven't even been able to eat half of my lunch. So that's one thing that's really affected me since I've had maladie debarkment syndrome is eating is difficult and it takes me a really long time and when I'm in an environment where there's a lot of noise and action around me like in a restaurant it's even more difficult you add the bobbing head and trying to eat with utensils and sometimes it becomes almost impossible um, it's difficult to get a fork to my mouth if I'm in a noisy restaurant. I remember when I was new to this illness and I was reading things about ways to cope with it. They suggested having other people help you stir things. Having other people cut your food for you. I'm a 37 year old woman. I'm not gonna have somebody else cut my food for me or stir my coffee for me. And those are also not the most difficult things that I need to do all day. But that's how we're supposed to cope with this illness. And that's the reality of it. Things that other people take for granted that are so simple are so incredibly difficult for us that we're urged to ask for help with it. And that hurts my pride more than anything. Living with MDDS means that I will never walk with swagger, but instead I'll spend my days finding ways to be grateful for my ability to clumsily stagger. So the reality of living with MDDS is it does mean bumping into a lot of door frames and a lot of chairs and I fall over almost every time that I have to get down low for something. If I'm down looking for something in the cabinet under the sink, chances are I'm probably going to fall over while I'm down there. Um, I've also taken a few bigger falls since having this. It's difficult for me to walk in the dark because my eyes are the only input to my brain of what still is. So I'm constantly using my eyes to spot still objects to send my brain a message so that I know where I am because sometimes I feel like I'm over here or over there or over here. Um, so it's really important for me to be able to see still objects and one night I got up in the middle of the night and needed to use the restroom and I didn't want to disturb anybody and in turn I ended up taking a fall in the dark because of it. Um, another time that I fell I was really highly triggered after being in a grocery store. Grocery shopping is something that's very hard for people who have MDDS um, because of the fluorescent lighting in there, because of all the sounds, because of the busyness and all the movement of other customers, um, and also just the aisles that we're walking down can really trigger high symptoms. So my symptoms were really high after doing some grocery shopping, and because you feel this sense of always being in a different place than you actually are um, my not quite depth perception but my perception of where I was in ratio to other objects was very off and as I was getting some groceries out of the trunk when I leaned into the trunk I misperceived how close I was to the edge of the trunk and I hit the front of my face on the trunk um, 
and then it caused me to jerk backwards and because my balance is so awful due to having mal de debarkment syndrome um, it caused me to completely fall backwards um, so those were a few of the bigger spills that I've taken but falls from a low position are kind of something that happens every single day for me after having said that, living with MDDS means being extra careful. Uh, it means you're a fall risk. And it means sometimes needing to slow down and take it easy and to stop when your body has had enough. But then again, living with MDDS means living with an invisible illness. So sometimes people around you don't understand why you're needing to slow down and take it easy or why you need to cancel some plans because you just can't handle being in that environment or because you've spent all your spoons that day. So I want to dedicate this video to all the people out there who are spoonies and who are living with the struggles of having an invisible illness. Um, I'd definitely like to do some more videos in the future on some of the struggles of having an invisible illness are, um, some of the expectations that other people might have of us. And I'm also looking forward to putting out another video soon about the actual sensations that I feel living with MDVS.